Hey, welcome back to the Chasing Tone podcast. I'm Frank. I'm Max. I'm Brian. And I have no idea what to say after this point. So uh, if so if you're sitting in Travis's spot and Travis <laughs> isn't here, are you our new dad? <laughs> two Christmases. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> two Christmases. Hashtag two Christmases. I don't think, I'm not a scientist, but I don't think that's what that means. But I can sure? tell you that if I was... Uh, I would be the uh, I would be the long distance stepdad that you never see. Well, we could start two Christmases. Maybe, yeah. We'll talk about it in okay. counseling over ice cream. Yeah, yeah. We'll <laughs> talk about it in counseling. <laughs> then we'll get you ice cream if oh. you're good during counseling. I don't like all these stipulations. <laughs> yeah. As long yeah. as I get my toy train, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's I got stuff planned for you, buddy. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's just jump right in. Let's yep. look at some questions. Sure. So let's, let's start you being the pickup guru of all pickup gurus. Whoa. Okay. So wow. this is it's from pressure. Abe. And false. <laughs> this is from Abe. He says, okay. what are the tonal and technical differences between the classic single coil and humbucker pickups like Strat single coil or PF? PAF humbuckers, and they're not so famous cousins like the Mini Humbucker, Dynasonics, etc. Also, what are some of your favorite tones achieved with the less famous pickups that would be hard to achieve with the classics? Okay. So, single coil family we have traditional Strat Tele, right. P90, Lipstick, Diarmond, Dynasonic, Anico V, uh, 54 Les Paul Custom Neck. Right, right, right. Like the, the yep. staple pickups and things like that. Yeah, yeah so anytime you take a uh, a smaller single coil pickup, big differences are the window that it's looking at to see the string, right? right? So a single coil pickup looks at a smaller section of the string, which is inherently a little brighter, a little more, you know, sparkly on the top end. Sparkly! Uh, those are things that are inherent. Now that's not to say there's a single coil that's thicker and bassier sounding than a humbucker right. that's wound to be really bright, mm -hmm. but there's harmonic content that's totally different if you're looking at a tiny window in the string versus if you're looking at a bigger window. When you take a humbucker and you look at a larger portion of the string, there's actually some more cancellation of some of the harmonics, and that's why it's part of the reason we hear it as being thicker mm -hmm. sounding, right. you know what I mean, like more fundamental, a little bit less overtones. Uh, but you can wind a pickup, you know, like the original PAF pickups, some people say sound almost single coilish mm -hmm. because they're 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 underwound by what we define today as like a typical PAF. Right. Because we had this whole period of time where people sought out overwound versions of PAFs because that was just better when things went to eleven, you know? Right. And so they were like, Oh, I played a bunch of these, you know, Gibsons and that one had the hottest pickups and I liked it the best, you know. Now there's like this bit of renaissance where people are like, man, an underwound PAF has all these clarity, you know, all these this clarity and all these qualities that I want, you know, but it's still not replicating this narrow string window. Mm -hmm. And so you got to isolate those two things. Say, okay, with a single coil, I'm only listening to a small part of the string and the humbucker, I'm listening to a big part of the string. And then within that, I can make a fat sounding single coil. I can make a skinny sounding humbucker, mm -hmm. you know, but when you coil split, a humbucker to a single coil, you are just listening to one coil's magnetic image of the string. And some people are like, well, I like to put my humbucker in parallel because it sounds single coilish. Mm -hmm. It drops the DC resistance down and all of a sudden it sounds more single coil, but it still hum cancels hum. Right. And that's true, but you are still listening to a wider window. Right. Do you find the same is true with stacked humbuckers? Well, a stacked humbucker, the, all the rules are out the window for humbucker because stacked means you have all this wire that's down below the first coil, and all that wire is doing is adding a bunch of loading, like a bunch of resistive loading. Mm -hmm. So kind of like uh, having to walk with, you know, 10-pound sandbags on each one of your legs. That's what it's doing to, like, the pickup's ability to create its tone. Like the top coil's ability to make a, mm -hmm. a tone mm -hmm. is getting dragged down by all this resistance from the bottom coil. And there's a bunch of patents and a bunch of different pickup companies who have made bottom coils have less resistance and higher inductance to sort of cancel hum, but not be as, as, as much of a, you know, put a stranglehold on the top coil. Right. Um, but then also it's like uh, there's a lot of comb filtering and phase cancellation because that bottom coil, no matter how 
deaf you try to make it, it's still hearing some sound from the string that's way up above it. And that sound isn't really phase coherent with the sound that the top coil is producing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, it, it, and that's why people say like a stack like ruins a single coil, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You say that, right? You've said that over I've dinner? I've said that multiple times in, in special engagements. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stacks ruined single coils. You lost me at Combs. You used yeah. family so, gatherings. And <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, and not, uh, I, I promise this is not, a, uh, not, not for the sake of plugging, but, you know, in the Fishman Fluence coils, that stack strat pickup, the top coil is really thin and it's way up against the string and then the bottom coil is way farther down and because of how that bottom coil is layered up like that, that is, I mean, it's, a, it's really deaf. It's really not listening to the top strings hardly at all. So it's like right. the best of, of trying to do that. But then because that top coil has so much tone density in it, because there's all this information right up against the string, the little bit that the bottom coil does come in and like thin out that sound is actually welcomed then. It actually makes the makes them sound better than if there wasn't, you know, a bottom coil right. on it. Um, and then you get to stuff like Tele, uh, where it's a single coil, but then there's all this other weird magnetic stuff that's going on because if you have that plate, you know, you've got the bridge on a telly, mm -hmm. yep. that's a drag on the magnetic field. And so is, I don't know if it's a drag, but that metal bottom plate when there's a steel bottom plate on a telly pickup, mm -hmm. that's having an impact on eddy currents and on the magnetic field. So it's not really that easy to go, I want my Strat to sound like a telly. Even though they're both single coils and you could even... You yeah. could even put a telly, an actual telly pickup in your Strat pick guard, right. and you're still missing. It doesn't work. I've, I've yeah, fought that battle you're before. You're still missing one of the elements, which is that, that plate and how yeah. that plate is kind of spreading out the magnetic field. Um, and then when you get to the like, Dynasonics and staple pickups and all this in the gold foil and even the GNL MFD that he's mm -hmm. talking about here, all those things are basically radical departures when it comes to the magnetic circuit the magnetic field and the way that that looks at the string yes there's also differences in the coil geometry a big old fat coil is going to sound different than a skinny tall one mm -hmm. whether it's wound hot or whether it's wound weak it's still the geometry is still part of the sound so everything's interrelated everything's codependent and you know you get to uh, i mean if there's a if there's a s sound that was created on like a staple p90 neck pickup in a les paul like you're you're really gonna have a hard time getting there with a regular P90 mm -hmm. or a humbucker, and those are just me those are mechanical limitations you now that you can't really overcome. The GNL MFD that's sort of a thin squatty coil, but with a big ceramic magnet underneath, and then the ceramic magnet instead of being like pointed into each other to direct the field up the top, it's like. It's this big ceramic magnet that's all pointing north or all pointing south, like through the coil. So Leo Fender, you know, just again, kind of, you know, broke his own mold again. And some people like those pickups, some people don't. But if you like them, it's the only pickup that does that. Right. If you don't like them, then you can't, you, you'll put anything else in it, right. you know, to not have it. Um, but the, those are the things that become insurmountable are like the magnetic circuit, the magnetic interaction with the strings. All the other things can kind of be bent and shaped and twisted. I'm going to make this one bassier, I'm going to make this one trebly or whatever. So, so it's magnetic based. Do yeah. guitars sound the same on the South Pole as they do the North Pole? Uh, yes. It's a localized magnetic field. Two Christmases. <laughs> 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 I don't know if you want the gift from the Santa from the South Pole. <laughs> Do you? I mean, it would seem to be like a, it would cancel out. That's right? another podcast it'd be out of altogether. Face. Yeah, it would be out of phase. <laughs> like Santa from the South Pole is like, yeah, I came to take your skateboard. <laughs> right? <laughs> or would like he's he? He's a thief, I right? would think, right? It'd exactly. be the opposite. You're not my real mom. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> oh, man. So, okay. I don't know. We're touching on so, humbuckers, too, like a PAF sure. versus a Filtertron, mm -hmm. mini humbucker. Yeah. All that stuff is different magnetically. And you can go online and look at, like, internals, you know, like Google image for pickups that are taken apart, you know. Yeah. But, like, a mini humbucker, it's like there's a little base magnet or there's not. There's just blades. Like, the magnets are the actual blades. Right. 
But there's humbuckers that are like that too, like under a cover, like an EMG. Mm-hmm. Some of those coils are that way where the it's not a blade with a magnet underneath. It's just that there's a magnet that's the blade. Uh, and all that stuff changes it. I mean, if you have... If I have a magnet in this coil and a magnet in that coil, that sounds a certain way. And then if I take a piece of steel and join them so that I can I connect that loop and I make a U right. shape out of it, that changes it yet again. So yes, there are uh, a lot of differences. And I like the question. I don't. I can't really think of a specific things, but you know, what are some favorite tones that? were achieved with the less famous pickups that would be hard to achieve with the classics. I mean, if I mean, there's sounds, you take a Brian Setzer type of sound, you know, that's coming off of that Gretsch. If I'm in a cover band and I'm supposed to pretend I'm that and all I have is even a 335 or mm-hmm. a Les Paul, that's a hard, I mean, that's hard. Right. That's going to be difficult to uh, to overcome. Everything's different. The resonant peak, how it falls off after the, it just, yep. there's so many things that are different about it. What... You know, pet peeve, I'm sure you've seen this, but, you know, you got a guy in, a, like, a cover band, and he's playing a Strat, and then the Santana song comes up, you know, and you're like, ah, what's he going to do, you know, and he's like, flips it to the neck pickup, and maybe rolls the tone control down, maybe he doesn't, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like, ah, I don't want to hear this, you know, I'm sure the whole audience couldn't care less. Well, they're there <laughs> to see a cover band play Santana, they probably don't care. Right. That's right. <laughs> In general. That's right. Yeah, yeah. They're not there for the music. They're there right. for the $2 beers. But isn't that something like the guitar <laughs> players can be in the audience and be like, come on, man, he never uses Strat. Those are the guys there. in the back with their arms folded. Yeah, exactly. What's he thinking? I mean, he did use a Strat. Like, winning was a Strat. But come on, you're not going to do, like, Black Magic Woman, right. you know, on your Strat. But so, but that's why I bring way too many guitars to each gig. You do? I do. How many do you bring? I'm that guy. Because you're... You, Praise and worship guy on the Sundays too, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And so I'm like, always, I'll always bring at least two guitars to Sunday, but uh, sometimes I don't. I mean, a lot of times I'm only playing the one. I just bring the second one for backup. Right. Um, but yeah, when I'm playing live, like if there's room to put them, I'll I'll bring three, four different guitars. Really? Yeah. But I, you always got to have the broken string guitar. Always. Yes. It's yeah. true. Uh, but but yeah, if you. Uh, I change them up a lot. I mean, sometimes, like, I play a fretless guitar for a few songs. I saw that on YouTube. Yeah, so that <laughs> that is not, uh, you know, you have to bring that guitar. You can't just be like, well, I'll just shut the frets off on this one. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Yeah, because that's like, that's your slide thing, your, your little slide emulator, right? You, well, I just play yeah. it for a fretless. I mean, I play lap steel, too. So then I'm playing with a slide. Right. But I mean, you were um, doing, well, I saw you were doing a lot of slides. That's how you have to play it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can still do, you can still run patterns on it. Right. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm that guy. I'm the guy that brings like too many guitars, but not the guy who takes himself too seriously, you know, where it's like, I don't, I don't have like, wait, everyone, <laughs> hang on. I got to put this guitar on, you know, <laughs> um, and like the guy's ready on the down, like, and a one and hang on. <laughs> My strap isn't perfect. Yeah, I can't play Santana on a strat. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Just wait. You know. So no, I'm not. I'm not that guy. But uh, uh, but I do bring different guitars and you know. What about my, amps? My bring different stuff. amps? No, I bring one amp. I got like a great two twelve. Um, now for t- church environments, praise and worship, or this translates into like small clubs. I'm actually a guy who does run direct a lot. Um, not a lot like I prefer it. I just mean when stage volume has to be low, you know, or let's just call it like it's courteous for stage volume to be low, even if it's in a big, you know, church or theater or something like that. Right. And you just want to be courteous to the people that are around you. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to blow them off the stage and be that guitarist who's over there just banging away and everyone's like, you know, can I get more of my on the monitor? You know, that might've been what they used to say about me. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But at least you had good tone. I think I was that guy. But you had good tone. I I was the guy that literally brought a Marshall stack to to church. I've I've seen people bring stacks and it, and I've seen it work because they don't have it loud. And with four speakers, they keep the SPL lower. And so it's not like a blasting 112. I want right? God to hear me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He, so, so, I'm, so I'll do that sometimes. And when I do that, then I just have like a 2 by 8 as my own personal guitar monitor. Mm-hmm. And I'm just – so then I'm listening. I can hear myself, but it's got a short throw, and it's not really bothering, you know, everybody else. If they want it in the monitors, they can have what I'm feeding them, you know, right. in the monitors. 
but I'm not like a I'm not a modeler guy for direct. I have like a piece of rack gear and I make created my own algorithms mm -hmm. to create, you know, the cabinet, you know, basically to create that stuff. I did that um, you know, right in my own way. Mm -hmm. Uh but yeah, so live, like when I play with Seymour or when we're, you know, playing a club gig or something, I got a two by 12 that I love. It's an old Fender. The pine's all dried out by now. And, you know, it just sounds great. And then just something Fendery, you know, something Fender clean. And then I have a pedal board that's like the biggest one, you know, the, maybe it's not the biggest pedal train anymore. They might've made like a refrigerator one, mm. <laughs> but it's a big one. It's a big pedal board with a lot of stuff on it. And I stomp around on different drive boxes. Most of it's drive. Is it really? Yeah, just to you get different flavors. Oh, yeah. Because I figured you'd have like 18 delays. No. No, I have one delay. I just have one delay. And I'll tap it, you know. I tap the tempo in. And I'll adjust it a lot with my feet. Mm -hmm. So I don't, need the mul I don't need a bunch of delays, n nor do I need like a programmable one. Because mm -hmm. I'll just reach down and adjust it, you know, on the fly. During service? Yeah, with my foot. Reach down. So reach ever, down with my toe. Do you ever just claw. like not get it and stop the song? Nope. Reach down and... No. I just need a little more repeats going on here. Nope. Nope. Just boop. Yeah, I'm like Fred Astaire, man. <laughs> just, my feet can adjust almost everything, you know? And I'm still dancing around. Anyway. Sit well So the me. pickups. Yeah, there you go. No, so what's next? Okay, so the next one is from Brent Ulrich. Or Ulrich. Maybe Ulrich. We don't know. Maybe both. Lars Ulrich. So <laughs> he said, I wonder if you guys have, uh, I wonder, I wondered if you guys ever run into polarity issues when using a stereo rig. This has been happening to, to me a lot lately, live and in the studio for multiple reasons. Sometimes when I'm using other people's amps, the speaker may be wired out of phase. I've also ran into issues sometimes if I have different pedals after a stereo splitter. Some pedals will invert phase, some will not. Is there an easy way to fix this problem? Is there a pedal on the market that does nothing but inverts polarity so I can put it on one leg of my stereo feed? Could I make a simple pedal that swaps the hot and ground wires like you do on a speaker? Right. So, no, you can't do that. But You but can't do that. Uh, you could feasibly make, one, make a polarity reversal in a in a pedal format mm -hmm. that's for the speaker exit yep. but it's risky because that you don't want your speaker i mean you need a nice solid connection from the especially right. for the tube amp you need a nice right. solid connection and you don't want to hit it on the fly and have it arc right. when you're switching across um it's a good idea nobody does it that i know of no one has like a really not, a polarity reversal not really but i mean there's there's pedals that do i mean it depends on the circuitry so yes. if you're using an inverting op amp in there somewhere then you're inverting the phase yes uh, if you're using a jfet for example you're inverting the phase at that stage so right um for example we had a pedal called the talent booster it's just one jfet so it would invert that phase right so like um and it might have been, even been brent where we, I said, you know, if you can find one on eBay, we don't sell anymore. But that'd fix the problem. Just throw it in there, set it to uni gain. Right. It'll fix the problem. Right. Um, so there, there's so many ways to attack the phase, right? Because right? then, of course, different amps too. 12 right. AX7s invert the phase. Right. So if you have three preamp tubes and one yeah. amp and two preamp tubes and another amp, yeah. then you're out of phase. Yeah, and it's funny. Like there's a, you know, like a, if we're talking about like germanium fuzzes, you know, range master type pedal is one. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, a, f a fuzz face type is two, and like a Mark II tone bender is three. Right. And so it's like you're out, you're in, you're out. Right. You know, when you have one, two, or three, it's 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 uh, it's inverting or it's not. Right. And there's no there's nothing really you can do in the pedal to say, oh, I want to keep phase alignment because now you're abandoning the circuitry and right. Like you said, unless you unless you put like an yeah. a, a, a inverting buffer or something. Right. But nobody wants that at right. the end of their fuzz pedal. Right. Because it's part of how it's going to interact with the wah or whatever. Right. You know? So the easiest fix is obviously if you have access to the back of the amp, if you did, you know, and you've got those push connectors on the speaker, mm -hmm. well, then just, just reverse those. And remember to put it back <laughs> if you borrowed the amp. Right. Um, but you can also carry around an inverted speaker cable. Mm -hmm. And so if you have head cab, yeah. then That's a good idea. you can always, even if, you know, if one amp you will know is yours all the time, you know, if, if both amps aren't borrowed, you know, but if you have mm -hmm. one amp that is yours always, just have an inversion capability on that one. Mm -hmm. 
And so if your amp is a closed combo, so it, so it is fixed and you can't really get to it, then you could wire up a little thing where you're like, well, I'm going to plug it in. Well, I'm going to plug it in through this like, cable. Like a coupler of this sort. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. You could have a little female and a male mm -hmm. and be like, I'm going to do this. And now that speaker is now right. inverted. That kind of still, you know, there are, it, it can still screw you up if that pedal that's inverting phase that is after your split, mm -hmm. and it's one that you turn off and on. Right. That means that every time you turn it off and on, you'll have, you know, inverted it. Right. But I can't. I don't think there's that many pedals. Like you said, there's some that invert and are sort of neutral, like mm -hmm. a Talon Booster set to Unity. Mm -hmm. But that's all before the speaker. The speaker is the AC connection. You right. know, all the rest of that stuff is DC. Right. Sometimes on an amp, like a, some some of the Fenders. The first channel will be out of phase mm -hmm. with the second channel, right. the second bank. And so that's another trick. If you're sitting there trying to combine two amps and one is Fender style, you might get lucky, depending on the age of the amp, when you're like, oh, these are out of phase. And even though it might not be your preferred channel, it's like, well, just plug it into the other one and see right. if that fixes it, uh, if that inverts it. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, yeah, you'd have to do it before that and you'd have to do it. Right you know with a phase inverting inverting pedal but it's a it's a great question but so that's so you got cape you know a cable wire a cable backwards oh and when he says cuz he asks can i switch hot and ground on you the know, pedal yeah yeah you can't, you can't do that you can do that with a speaker cable right you can't do that before the amp right you know that that can't be done that you'd need a a buffered like phase inverter right. Uh, in order to be able to do that. And nobody wants to carry around a mixer, but that's another way <laughs> is to have a little portable two-channel mixer that has a phase, right. you know, button on it. Um, that's a great question. Though. Yep. Yeah. All right, so the next one from Elliot Brooks. Um, and this is, this is going to be something I think is going to resonate with you because okay. it's uh, how do you guys get where you're at? Resonance. I'm only 21. And basically just taking my first baby steps into adult life. Aww. I just, <laughs> I'm, I'm just really curious how you guys got the job positions that you're at. For some reason, it sounds very rad to work for a pedal. Yeah. To, to work for, for a, a pedal, pedal company, company. In, a, in a way. Yeah, working for a pedal is so lame. <laughs> sure. There's no gratification. They don't say thank you. There's like nothing, you know. You don't even get paid. Uh, I also had a question that pertains to me, uh, Brian, specifically. Uh, how does he get to the point where he's at? From what I understand, he went to college. No, I did not. And so, uh, so did that include classes he needed on economics or le I'm sorry, electronics and whatnot? Right. Um, he's mentioned the podcast when he first started modding pedals. So where do you start right. modding pedals? Um, so it, he, Elliot Brooks here says I dig guitar pedals. It's right. always been something I wanted to get more into. Um, I actually did not go to college, and I barely graduated high school. And I, the only way, this is, sounds stupid, I took two PE classes in my senior year to graduate high school. Oh, man. So you must have been I really was, fit. I was like the, your classic <laughs> D student. Yeah. You know, and I like barely got the Ds because the teacher's like, just get him out of my class. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like yeah. he's got a D minus, 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 minus. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, yeah, it didn't start out that way. I just, I knew at 14 years old that I was going to work for myself. Yeah. So I mowed lawns for people. I, you know, would try to, to knock on people's doors, be like, hey, uh, need your sidewalk cleaned? You know, I was that yeah. kid. It's yes. just like, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to work for somebody else. I'm going to go, I'm going right. to find something to do to work for Which myself. is cool when you're 14. Um, uh, when you're doing it when you're 33, it's a little creepy. <laughs> it's a little creepy. Like, um, yeah. yeah. Can I you clean your sidewalk? <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's no good. Um, but yeah, so you're, uh, you know, not, so great advice, but this guy's 21. I'm saying you're close. That's close to creepiness about like, can I mow your lawn? You know? Um, yeah. Don't, don't start there. I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it may surprise you to learn. Um, my story is not all that different. Um, so uh, I don't have a degree. And uh, I, the same, similar kind of thing. It was like, you know, Smart. I don't mean I'm like that smart. I'm just saying like yeah, you definitely smart, but doesn't that. apply himself, you know. But if you <laughs> dig deeper, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they, maybe the way school is run now, they would have 
diagnosed me with something, you right. know, and it would have been a magic fix. You yeah, know, I, put him I, in that class with those guys. Right, I would, I would have been you know? like what I don't know what they call it now. Yeah, so many initials. When I was in school, it was yeah. like the A D H O C D E B X Q Z Y. Right. Yeah, just stack them all. Yeah, up. I I'd have been all those yeah. things. I've been diagnosed. <laughs> I'm sure you have. His, you have this, and this, and this. Like, right. Okay. No, I just have yeah. trouble paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, guess what? You're boring. How about that? How about you be more exciting when you teach and don't go home and drink a bottle of Jack every night to escape the fact that your life didn't turn out the way you thought it would? How about that? You come to school and you teach like you're happy to be there. Right. Maybe then we'll get along. Oddly <laughs> enough, I was a double major and I worked for these guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Criminal justice and political science. But yeah, I'm yeah. working in the musical industry for two guys who <laughs> did have a degree. So your advice, uh, yeah, just, just get some luck. Quit school. <laughs> Quit school. Oh, yeah. Start a company. Yeah. Stay don't, on drugs. Yeah. Don't do drugs. <laughs> um, that's a big one, right? So neither of us have, have uh, frittered away time on, on uh, you know, extended drug uses or anything like that. Well, sure. I did have, have, have a period <laughs> in my 20s. You did? Where I, I may have experimented with the... Uh, with yeah. the Alcohol. With, yeah. With the, okay. So. All right. Okay. Well, then, so no, we're not all that... The same, I guess. <laughs> uh, we're a little different. No, but uh, I mean, you can. Do, here's the thing: you can do the standard entrepreneurial. I don't want to call it like just a speech or a motivational thing, but it's like if you if you have that spirit, just find ways to have it manifest itself, like Brian right. said. So for me, I didn't always work for myself, um, but you know, at a very young age, I started working for just whatever. So like 21, just find somebody. I mean, I don't. I'm. I don't want to pick on us. I'm not going to name a brand, right? But right. let's pretend that it just so happens that a brand, there's something music related, music electronics, whatever, and they're near you or they're in your hometown or it's a job that you can get. Just get it. And you might, it might be a company where you're just like, oh, I don't want to tell people I work there. Right. But so what? You need to go do it and you need to have, you know, you just need to get the, ex the experience. Um, and that's what I did. I worked for a few different companies early on. There was a big time in the middle where I would, I would say I got professionalized, actually, in an entrepreneurial mm -hmm. way. Right. I, um, I worked in finance and investments and things like that, and so I, I kind of was doing a thing where you did have to be self-motivated and you were kind of in control of your destiny. And I don't know what kind of person you are at age 21, but what was great about it is that it brought out not only showing me what my strengths were, but it showed me what my weaknesses were. So it was like, oh man, I am just not good at organizing this kind of a thing in my life or at this or that. But if you're the only person that you can rely on to do it, you'll either fail, which is okay because... Right. In school, know, we're taught that failing is bad. Right. In the business world, failing is good they, because that teaches you what not to do and then you change your path a little bit and keep going. Right. Unless that's, you're flying an airplane, then failing is very bad. <laughs> right. Do not. <laughs> if, yeah. you're, if you're flying an airplane, <laughs> yeah. don't fail. <laughs> right. Right. Certain things you don't want to fail at. No. no. What they say. No. And if an <laughs> airplane is one of them. <laughs> right. Right. And going back to that, what do we say? There's a, you know, if you're an engineer, you know, at, a, at Boeing or something, it's, you know, you're in that, right. that board meeting. It's like, guys, Wings don't fall off airplanes, okay? <laughs> right. Look, I, don't, I you know sometimes the wind isn't going to blow out of the vent, right. or maybe the light switch isn't going to work, sure or it doesn't recline. Yeah, that's, it's like that's right. Like it, it we're going to work to solve these problems together, <laughs> you know, and, and tolerate certain things, and maybe even instrumentation goes down, and the pilot has to do something manually right. in order to land the plane. But the wings falling off is just not right. one of those things, right? right? We do there, the, we do we, everything yeah. to never ever make that happen. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> We're not so, even debating, you know, that one. So we can't use, you know, lower grade aluminum. I, I, <laughs> wings can't fall off the plane. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> right. The okay, Boeing president. Steal I beams right. and turn them into wings. Right. They never fall off right. the plane. Just yeah. wings can't fall off. <laughs> I, you guys, I just don't need to turn on the TV at midnight one day and see that the wings fell off. Okay? Can we not have that? So guitar tone. So back to guitar tone and entrepreneurship and whatnot. Right. It, breaking into the business. Breaking at, into at the business. 21. You'll learn that there's some things that you can't really make a mistake on. But like you said, other times, even the most disastrous failures, if you look into entrepreneurs, they've led to other successes. Right. So learn your strengths, but learn your weaknesses. And you don't necessarily have to fix all your weaknesses. You might if you're on your own, but 
You also could get into a situation where you just work a job that does focus on your strengths. Right. Um, or it, you meet people who they have the strengths that you need. Exactly. You partner up. Right. That's exactly it. So, you I mean, know? no one can be good at everything. You're no. just not. I know my strengths. I partner up with people who, and, and, you know, get people who work with me and who have strengths that I don't. Yeah. And, you know, I, what I just started doing, I just, I liked guitar stuff. So I just started doing it. And, right. Uh, you know, I started trying to sell them. Maybe you start on eBay. Uh, maybe you start on Amazon or something. You just start and you then you try to gather an audience and you do, you gather an audience by making great products and having great customer service and you get two customers and those two customers tell a buddy. Now you have three and then those three people, you know, have a friend. Now you have five customers and it, that's how it starts. There's no easy way. Right. You just start and you just do it. So that means if it's 10 o'clock at night and you have email to answer, you answer email at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. That's just, that's just part of it. Yeah. I mean, that's about it. I started taking my guitars apart when I was 12 or whatever. Yeah. You know, I wanted to know how they worked. I wanted to, right. you know, figure it out. My, my guitar hero was a luthier, you know, a guy, a guitar modder named rick kremer in aurora i was he was more of a hero to me than eddie van halen you know i mean i was still learning how to shred and play and stuff right. but that's just where my head was and yeah. so if that's where your head is too if you're into that stuff then yeah man i found out everything i could find out and you know what else i would back into information so like Stuart mcdonald catalog would show up right. they'd be like here's this new tool to make this job easier right and here's me like 12 year old guy i'd be like Oh, that's how they do that job. Like right. that would teach me how they did it because they had a tool that made one part of the job easier. Right. You're like, well, how do you make a screwdriver do that? Oh, right. there's a certain okay. tool. Okay. Right. So. Exactly. Yeah. So what's next? Well, I think that's about it. It's about yeah. 30 some minutes into it. So All right. We've changed lives, I think. We, yeah. <laughs> we have. We, yeah. So quit school. Elliot Brooks is going to uh, be our, your number one competitor one day. You know, you're going <laughs> to be like, Elliot Brooks, come like, on. Elliot Brooks is a fix. Yeah. Yeah. Why did we tell him to perceive, <laughs> pursue his dreams? There are no rules in the MIM stream. <laughs> School will not help you. <laughs> right, right. If you're lazy. Yeah. You're we should have crushed him when we had the chance. This will be you in five years I from now. should have told him just to give up his dream. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, well, long story short. Yeah. Yeah, don't compete with Brian. But follow your goal. Your crushing dreams and I will send you an NDA and an email. By the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. So for, uh, oh, wow, this is weird on this end of it. Right. For Frank and Max. Yes. I'm Brian with the Chasing Tone Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, leave comments. Uh, check us out on Instagram, Chasing Tone Podcast, Facebook, Wampler Tone Group, and Chasing Tone Podcast on Facebook. See ya.